Hey everybody, welcome back. Happy Saturday to episode 36. Um, we're kind of sporty today because yes. we're still going to work out after this. So we're, we haven't we got done our, it yet. We got our clothes on. So step one. <laughs> we're doing it. Uh, we're recording a little early today um, because we want to um, uh, promote a benefit that's taking place tonight. So we didn't want to like have you guys miss it in case you want to check it out. Uh, so we're going to give you all the details and tell you um, how it's going. We've had a wonderful day so far. Um, and we talked to our daughter. Her Today is her 19th birthday. So I have, to, um, I have to represent the University of Illinois. Yeah, so it's definitely weird not being together uh, on her birthday and being able to give her hugs and all that stuff. But she's got a good group of friends around her, and she's going to have a great day and going out to dinner tonight. So we are very happy, uh, and we'll see her next week. So... Uh, there you go. Happy birthday, Claire. <laughs> but another thing that's happening um, tonight, and, and this is sort of, uh, in a way, sort of related to our last um, thing about um, the pandemic and how things are going. You know, obviously, one of the big um, issues with COVID has been the economic fallout um, of the pandemic and the various restrictions and everything like that. In particular, um, you know, how it's uh, affected small businesses and one particular area of small business that's near and dear to us are independent music venues. Um, needless to say, most venues, in, in, at least in big cities, have been largely shut down. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they can't host live events. Sometimes they do live streaming events and things like that to try to, you know, make up for the lost venue. But there's this fantastic tradition of independent clubs and music venues um, throughout the country that, um, you know, provide tremendous uh, benefit to communities. We're particularly fond of some local places here, like there's a Cabaret Metro. It's not called Cabaret Metro. It's just right. Metro. That's an old 80s reference. <laughs> Metro in the city of Chicago. Uh, uh, um a favorite city winery. The city winery, which is in a number of cities, New York, Chicago, Dallas, uh, D.C., Atlanta, um, Nashville, I think. I may, I may not have gotten that exactly right, but it's close enough. Um, but one particular venue, maybe one of the greatest, if not the greatest, independent music venues in the country is a place called Tipitina's in New Orleans. And we love going to small places like that because as opposed to going to huge concerts where it's at United Center or just these huge arenas where there's thousands and thousands of people and the the performers like this big. When you get yeah, to you're mostly watching the video screen above the stage. Yeah, yeah. Being able to go we've seen amazing acts so close, uh, in just a small intimate setting, you know, kind of thing. So it's really nice to go someplace where you can actually see the people close up and be um, closer to the music, and it's just amazing. And supporting um, these venues, you know, the smaller venues, it doesn't just help the people who own the venues, it also helps the musicians uh, get by too, because, you know, not every act is going to play in, you know, some gigantic arena. Right. A lot of the majority of artists out there trying to make a living as musicians are playing in small venues. And the small venues have to survive in order for those acts to survive, you know. They're tied together. So um, tonight, as it turns out, there is a um, live stream from... Uh, Tipitina, or a live benefit for Tipitina's in New Orleans. Um, and uh, if you don't, if you've never heard of it, it is a legendary venue. I mean, New, New Orleans is the city for music in America. Right. I'm sorry, Nashville. I'm sorry, Memphis. I'm sorry, <laughs> Chicago and New York. New Orleans is the epicenter, I think, of American music and culture. Um, and, you know, it, at least the, the musical part, it is a, just an incredible, incredible place, which is, you know, it's at the center of, uh, you know, European culture, Spanish culture, French culture, African-American culture, American indigenous culture, Southern culture. Um, it is in so many ways the, qu the quintessential American city, and yet it's like no other city in America. Uh, it has far and away the best food you'll ever Definitely. get. Again, sorry, New York. Sorry, San Francisco. Sorry, Chicago. <laughs> New Orleans is the place for food. But there's also this great, great, great musical tradition 
And again, it's just this incredible sort of, um, you know, mixture of all of these incredible influences, African, Caribbean, Spanish, French, country music, blues, you know, modern uh, African-American music, hip hop and, and R&B and everything. And Tipitina's has been this club that's been around forever. Um, and, you know, was a sort of, time. it was the musical home of Professor Longhair, one of the great um, New Orleans piano players of all time. Everyone has played there. I think Dr. John and... And, and I think it's funny. This is one yeah, thing that I remember. We got to go there um, on a trip that we went to New Orleans. And I remember ordering a beer and you got a can of beer. Yeah, right. <laughs> it was right, right. like, okay. It's an old time <laughs> place, man. It is an old time place. We And we saw a, a, a band... That we were totally unfamiliar with we at the time. Yeah, they are known as Galactic, and you can find them on uh, social media. It's usually at Galactic Funk, or I think on. Yeah, um, they're still around. Oh yeah, they're making. We saw them in two thousand, and they're still making music, and they're fantastic. Um, and they're one of the main sponsors of this live stream tonight. You can see it on Facebook. You can see it on the Tipitina's website. The live stream is free, but it's, you know, obviously they're encouraging people to make donations to keep this institution Yeah, and even going. if you can donate $5, I mean, that all that adds up. Uh, we're going to leave the link when we're done um, to the actual fundraising page, but then also the links to the live streams and the Facebook so you can watch it. And the, how many bands are going to be tonight? There's um, going to be like, and a lot of our favorite ones, so that's kind of fun. Right, and I think some of this is is um, also um, they're going to have uh, video performances, um, you know, pre-recorded performances. Right. But just um, looking at the Galactic uh, um, Instagram page, they're going to have uh, performances by they, Professor Longhair, who's uh, you know passed away, but they'll, they'll have a video performance for him. Fats Domino, Willie Nelson, Dr. John, Widespread Panic, Wilco from Chicago, yep. um, Jean-Baptiste, uh, Trombone Shorty, Dinosaur Jr., The Radiators, who we saw... Um, great, great, great. There's, band. there's a. We'll, we'll get to that in a moment. But there's a great independent venue here near us called Fitzgerald's that is famous for hosting great New Orleans act acts. But the Radiators um, with Greg Allman, which I did not see coming. I did not have that on my 2020 bingo card. Right. <laughs> Greg Allman playing with the Radiators, uh, Preservation Hall Jazz Band, Galactic themselves. Um, Les Claypool from, um, um, oh my goodness, what was his band? We'll get back to that. Uh, but I often think of uh, Galactic and Les Claypool in the same um, in the same sense, the same way. Um, so anyway, all these phenomenal um, bands. So many bands. Um, and uh, well, also they're oh North Mississippi All Stars Taj Mahal, one of our favorite blues artists. We saw um, not that long ago here in Chicago. Um, and even and great, it starts great at band. eight p.m. Central Time, uh, right. and uh, so just so you know the time. <laughs> and you can look it up at tipitinas dot com. That's t i p i t i n a s dot com. Um, so you can either find it on Facebook or on their their website. Um, Oh, and look, I'm looking at the Galactic Post, and the first person I see who liked it is Robert Randolph, yes. another one of our favorite artists, <laughs> Robert Randolph and the family band. We saw them as well in Chicago. Yeah. This is all we do. When when we're able to go see music, we go see music. But um, one of the ways, or maybe the main way in which we sort of got into New Orleans and the music of New Orleans was a local club here called Fitzgerald's that I mentioned that was, um, for a long time, walking distance from our house. Right. <laughs> well, it really still is. It still is. We could walk there. But um, the owner, the former owner now, he's sort of retired and they sold the business recently, but the former owner used to go on uh, like essentially like a canoe trip down the Mississippi. Imagine that. Um, <laughs> and, you know, wouldn't go all the way from from uh, Illinois to New Orleans, I guess. But any, in any event, would go through Louisiana, needless to say. And during these, like, annual trips, got to know a lot of artists in 
New Orleans. And was uh, like, come on up. <laughs> and he started inviting these. I mean, and there's always been a connection because, of course, I-57 essentially connects Chicago and uh, Chicago and New Orleans, passing through Memphis along the way right. and things like that. So, I mean, it's not unusual for artists to travel back and forth. Um, and when David and I first met, that's right. Our one of our first dates was at Fitzgerald's, and we saw Terrence Simeon. No, the first one was C.J. Chenier. Oh yeah, C.J. Chenier, who we just saw again recently. Right, uh, and then Terrence Simeon, who's amazing. Oh, we'll he's tag great. him below. That's just just an amazing artist. We actually invited him to our wedding. Yeah, he at, a, at a break. <laughs> At a break, we came up and said, we're getting married. You should come to our wedding. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to come? Might have been some cocktails. There consumed. might have been. Really. <laughs> but we weren't driving, so just so you know. Yeah, uh, but just great music and just great. Another small venue where you're really up close to the uh, artists. Right. So we've had this, you know, it's it's been a, a part of our, um, you know, tradition to see acts from New Orleans Beausoleil, who they're a Cajun group that performs mostly in French. Um, Buckwheat Zydeco back in the old days. Is before Nicholas he's, Tremulous? No, like, Nicholas, he's from Chicago. Oh, he's from Chicago. Never mind. But he plays with, he's played with artists from down there. Um, but, you know, uh, the Neville brothers obviously are from New Orleans. Um, just all these phenomenal artists. And uh, it's one of the greatest venues. When, when we went there, you know, it, I mean, I'd heard of it for ages before actually going there. And we finally got around to going to the place. It was like going to church, you know. It was like this sort of like this mecca of, um, that's a bad mixed metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> but in any event, in any event. Uh, you know, it's just, it's like the this, this center of um, the New Orleans music scene. And the New Orleans music scene, as far as I'm concerned, is the center of the American music scene. And especially now, you know, this place has been around for decades and decades. And to struggle through all this and everything, they're just trying to, like, keep themselves afloat so that they will be there when we all get back to normal. So we just thought it would be a great idea to share it with you and just show um, your support and if introduce you to some new music if you haven't heard of these people it's going to be amazing we're going to probably stream it on our tv so it'll be like yeah. we're at the concert and new orleans itself has been hit hard because mm -hmm. you know obviously hurricane season has been really bad this year yeah. on top of Boy, they never get a break <laughs> they really don't they really don't i mean and and you know um even before Katrina, which is it's hard to think how you know that was what 2005 yeah. right? i mean so it's that was 15 years ago um, to some, in some ways, hasn't fully recovered from that, but um, it's one of our absolute favorite places on earth, um, outside of Chicago, New York. Yep. Um, we don't get uh, west of the Mississippi very often. <laughs> I, I know guess. we have to like broaden our horizons <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, uh, we'll have to make an effort to get <laughs> back to California or something like that. But um, so. Go to New Oh, the, the other thing, the other tie between New Orleans and Chicago is there are a number of great uh, New Orleans or Louisiana inspired restaurants in Chicago. Yes. One of our favorites, Heaven on Seven. Um, the chef is actually. Close friends with Jimmy Banos and yeah, his son. <laughs> Jimmy Banos, you know, is, has a lot of connections to New Orleans. When we were staying, um, I think it was when we went in 2000 for our fifth anniversary. We were staying at the Royal Sinesta on, on Bourbon Street, and uh, the concierge told us that um, he helped us get dinner reservations somewhere. Uh, it might have been Emeralds, but in any event, um, he told us that Jimmy Bano stays there when he's in New Orleans. So he's a, the chef at Heaven on Seven, uh, or the person who really created it. Yeah. Which is a crazy place because it's, a, it's this... Um, the name comes from the fact that the original location was on the seventh floor of this building in downtown Chicago. Because, you know, there's these old-time office buildings that would have, like, a lunch counter on the fifth floor. Yeah, the you'd never see it from the you street. Wouldn't, you, you wouldn't even, even know, know it's that. there. It's on Wabash, and you take the elevator right. up, and it's like, here's a restaurant. You get out of the <laughs> elevator, and there's a line of people down the hallway waiting to get in. Uh, yeah, so they took over this old-timey lunch counter and this old-timey office building, and they turned it into this incredible... And all the walls are decorated with hot sauce, yeah. bottles of hot sauces, and the jambalaya, the um, yeah. all the... Alligator etouffee, etouffee. Yeah. all of it is just amazing. Right. Really great stuff. Anyway, so um, we love New Orleans, and we love uh, Tipitina's and the music of New Orleans, and support independent music venues. 
So we will definitely leave all the links, tag some of the bands that are going to be recording or, t or playing tonight. And even if you can donate just a tiny bit, uh, it'll all add up. And uh, we hope you guys have a great rest of the day and enjoy your Saturday. We're going to get our workout on now. Are we? <laughs> yeah, in our gym, oh. in our basement. Yeah. In the basement gym. <laughs> in our basement gym. Uh, but I hope you guys have a great weekend, and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.